Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you very much. That was an amazing music piece there uh, by Kristin. So, not, much, not very musical here, but let me just tell you about um, Singularity University. Um, so, Singularity University was um, uh, founded... Well, sorry. Um, <laughs> okay, you see me in a lot of these photos, and the reason for that is obviously copyright issues and things. So, you know, it's not that I look very photogenic, but I um, hope that helps. So, Singularity is actually in... Um, uh, Singularity University is actually in NASA Ames Research Center, which is right next to Google, headquarters for NASA. Um, it was founded five years ago. Um, and the whole mission of Singularity University, sponsored by Google, you know, Genentech, um, and uh, Nokia, and so forth. The whole mission of Singularity University is to bring together 80 people every year into the program and train them in the latest exponential technology, which I'll talk about, and use it to solve grand challenges, to impact the life of a billion people. That's why you see this 10th power 9 thing everywhere. It was founded by these two people, um, Ray Kurzweil and Peter Diamandis. So Ray Kurzweil, if you don't know him, he's the guy that um, invented the CCD scanner, the Siri, uh, your Siri iPhone uh, voice recognition, uh, and the, machine for reading, uh, the reading machine for the blind, and so forth. And he wrote a number of books, and one of them was Singularity is Near, where he talks about how computers are moving so fast, technology is moving so fast, in a very short amount of time, uh, you'll be able to download your entire brain memory processes into a machine. Um, and I'll talk more about that later, and essentially uh, live forever if you wanted to, um, in a machine. He actually, uh, actually, Singularity is near and the Transcendent Men are uh, made into movies, so you can actually uh, watch that if you like. So let me just tell you what exponential technology is all about. At the moment, we have the computational uh, power to simulate an insect brain. In about a couple of years, a mouse brain. And by 2025, probably a human brain. And by 2050, all of human brain. What are we going to do with all this technology and what is exponential growth, right? Okay, our brain um, has a very, very uh, uh, high tendency to think linearly. So if I say, if you take a meter a step, in 30 steps, you would be 30 meters away. If I say you would take exponential steps, so every step you double, so the first step is one, second is two, four, eight. In 30 steps, how far do you think you guys would have gone? 26 times around the Earth, okay? A billion meters, and that's how fast some of this technology are moving. Uh, think about it, right? I mean, your iPhone less than seven years. Your iPad is, you know, even, you know, like four or five years. Um, Peter Diamandis is the other founder of Singularity University. He wrote this book called Abundance. Uh, the future is better than you think. If you haven't read the book, I highly encourage you to read it. It talks about all the positive side of how technology has progressed humanity. Um, you know, the thing is that we, we still have the remnants of what's called the amygdala part of the brain, the reptilian brain. So we are very sensitive to negative news, right? That's how we survive. You know, when a lizard comes into a room, it looks for food or danger, right? And we, you know, it helps us evolve to where we are right now. But, you know, we now have kind of surpassed that, but we still look at negative side of things. But we've kind of missed all the positive side of things that technology brings. Um, and Peter Diamandis is also the founder of the XPRIZE Foundation, using competition to drive down the cost of space travel. For example, the Space Galactic um, project that's uh, going to take off next year with Branson, um, and a few other companies. So he's a really amazing guy. And um, some of the speakers spoke of passion. Um, some people asked, and, you know, like, how do you find your passion, right? So Peter's, uh, um, Peter's advice is that think, think back to the time when you were a kid. What do you really enjoy doing? And that doesn't help, then imagine that you have a billion dollars or more what would you do right now to change the world? And maybe that you'll find a passion that way. So Singularity University, um, the two ways to get into it, you enter a competition that's held around the world in each country with sponsors. So I'm looking for sponsors for Malaysia. We have, I'm the only Malaysian in the program so far. Um, and they have um, basically people from 80, uh, 80 people from 35 countries. And one of my classmates is here actually from France. So uh, if those who know about Singularity University, go see Yasmin uh, or myself. Um, and if you apply directly, you have, um, you have three criteria, you, you know, obviously your academic skill level. Having said that, not everybody have degrees. Some of them are just super brilliant like Jobs and Zuckerberg and so forth and feel university is just a waste of time. Second is your entrepreneurial skill. And thirdly, um, you know, your passion to try and solve grand challenges, uh, to try and change the world. Um, so this is where we play Find the Malaysian. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, so anyway, um, let me talk a bit more about exponential technology. I'm sure you've seen some of this stuff, right? Print me a Stradivarius, a 3D printer. You guys are familiar with 3D printers? So a Stradivarius, you know, is one of the most rarest violin in the world, right? The craftsman is already, you know, passed away, so you can't actually get a 
exact replica, but, but with 3D scanning, 3D, 3D printing, you could 3D print an almost exact replica of the printer. And it's not just that, you know, like everything you see here, this is the Autodesk gallery, everything you see is 3D printed, the motorcycle, some of these things can never be, can, can never be made by human hands. And they're 3D printing organs too, hearts, jaws. Um, so this is also going to change the world, right? I mean, you know, in the future, you might, you know, you, 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 you might not need to buy anything, right? All you've got to do is just take a photo of what you want and 3D print it at home. Um, the other thing is obviously, you know, what I talk about the singularity. This is 2045. There. It talks about how connecting the wetware, your brain, to the hardware, the computer, all right? It's not so far-fetched right now. I mean, the technology is moving very rapidly, as you know. But at the moment, um, if, if you have seen the Google Glass, you know, you wear the glass, you looked out, you look at the person, all the details come into, um, you know, in, into, into my screen. But I still have to read it, it goes into my brain. In the future, that could connect directly into my brain. So anything that my avatar sees, even in the virtual world, I can feel, smell, taste, and so forth. And that's where connecting your wet with your hardware, right? I always tell my students when I was lecturing that, you know, um, if you feel lousy in a you know, the crappy day, just boot up to the day that you feel good. But just don't forget to back up. <laughs> okay. Now, um, this is um, Watson. I'm not sure you heard of Watson's IBM developed this AI program. Two years ago, we defeated human contestants um, in, in the game of Jeopardy. Um, and now, Watson has read four million pages of medical um, journals and is better at diagnosing cancer and so forth. So this guy is Vinod Koshal. He's the co-founder of uh, Sun Microsystems and Koshal Ventures. He invested in a company that a friend of mine, the Gokos, um, developed a product called um, a live core uh, ECG device to check your heart. So it already saved three lives. You put your fingers there, it, it, it goes to the cloud, and it basically analyzes your data and tell you whether you're having a heart attack. Um, so Vinod Koshal predicts that in less than 10 years, 80% of GPs are going to be redundant. If you think about it, right, you really don't need um, a GP because you get all your data sent up to the cloud, and you know you think your GP has read four million pages of medical journals? I don't know, I, but I don't think mine does. Um, anyway, this is me in Nairobi, right, in the safari park, in the national park. Uh, what I'm trying to show you is like mobile phone penetration in Africa, for example, for exponential growth, from 2% to 70%, right, in less than 13, 14 years. Um, a Maasai warrior in the national park today with a smartphone has access to more information than Bill Clinton did 15 years ago. Think about that. Okay, and it's going to level the playing field. Why? Because it's this dematerialization of stuff, right? Previously, you want a video recorder, you got to buy one. You want a camera, you buy one. You want a GPS, you, well, it's like a few hundred thousand dollars in the old days. Um, but you have all this in one small compact device. It's all software driven, right? And this is leveling the playing field for the um, Africans and the rest of the uh, people in the developing world, so they can compete as well as you and I do. Um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with Moore's Law, how it's growing exponentially, you know, every 18 months, computer power double, your hard, div hard drive prices fall, you know, speed get faster and so forth. But I don't know whether you heard about the cost of sequencing your genes. It has fallen faster than Moore's Law, okay? It used to cost a billion dollars 10 years ago. Today, it's only about $1,000. And why is this important? Because it's creating new fields like pharmacogenomics, prescribing medication to you according to your genetic makeup. Because right now, when the pharmaceutical companies create new drugs, they call it drug discovery, because they have no idea how or why it works. They just try anything that works. Um, with, but with this um, new field, you can actually understand how diseases ha you know, uh, happen and how you can treat it. And other areas like epigenetics, how your genes are turned on and off uh, by exposure to the environment and so forth. So this is a really exciting time to be alive. And you could probably live forever if you wanted to. Um, and the other thing I want to talk about is big data, right? You guys heard about big data, obviously. Um, so from the start of time to 2003, we as humans have generated 5 billion gigabytes of data. That's from the first caveman painting to Dan Brown's, you know, to Mozart's composition. Okay, that's how much data we generated. How long do you think it takes us to generate that amount of data today, in 2013? 10 minutes, right? 10 minutes. And that's how much data we generated. Think about it, your, your cameras were like one, you know, like 10 kilo megapixels. Now your Nokia is 40 megapixels. The US Air Force drones are using gigapixels. Your MRI scans are higher res. You know, 100 hours of YouTube is downloaded and so forth. Um, 
okay? And, um, and at Singularity, it's not just um, technology, it's why we're doing it. So one of the tracks for Singularity in the Grand Challenges is poverty and health. So Evan Wadongo, the, the, the person um, on, your, on your left here, is the CNN hero of 2010. You can't see it here, he's a Kenyan engineer. When he was growing up, he studied using a kerosene lamp in a tent. So if you know anything about kerosene lamp, it's really bad for your lungs and really bad for your eyes. So, so he's almost legally blind. But he basically wanted to use his the knowledge to create an ability to make a low-cost solar lamp that people can charge and use it and, uh, and prevent blindness and so forth. And sitting behind me, if you, you know, in Singularity, my classmate, if you would like to call it, is Steve Wozniak, the co-founder of Apple. So it's amazing people that you meet out there. And this is Jack and Dracker, you probably know him, right? He's a 15-year-old boy. A 15-year-old boy with the technology of today was able to create an early pancreatic cancer detection that is 168 times faster and 26,000 times cheaper than any technology out there. 15-year-old boy. I mean, that's, isn't it amazing? I mean, what you guys can do, I mean, you know, um, the, the technology has really leveled the playing field. So, let me, let me show you uh, one of my passions here, synthesis biology. I don't know, don't know whether you guys heard about what, what it is. I think this is a really interesting field that's growing. So at Singularity, we do a 23andMe um, gene sequencing uh, exercise. We spit into a test tube. It goes into a 23andMe. They analyze it and sequence for our genes. And then in six weeks, you get an email, you log in, and you can find out data. You know, this, is, this is my personal data that I'm sharing with you, right? So like, it tells you things like, you know, I don't have the alcohol rate flush. You know, like most Asians, when they drink alcohol, they turn red, so I don't turn red. My ear wax is brown. Uh, but the more important thing is like the medication, what effect it has on me. Um, you know, and also like I have a higher probability of having problems with my eyes, so I should have more regular checkup. But what's really interesting, being a Malaysian, right, we're such a mixed lot. My dad, my grandparents on my dad's side are from Hainan Island, right, Hainanese. How many Hainanese in the, in the uh, crowd? All right, <laughs> Suki. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, we're very Asian, right? Um, you know, relatives up in Siberia, down to New Zealand. But my mom's side, is from Cebu, from Fuchao, right? Uh, from Fuchao province. Any Fuchaos in the room? No Fuchaos. Okay. Oh, cool. All right, there you go. Kalyu. So you see, over there, right? I mean, you know, I, we are highly correlated to the Native American Indians, you know, more than the Asians. So I'm thinking of going back to the U.S. and claim some Indian reservation land, open a casino, <laughs> and you all have to call me Chief Sitting Tan. <laughs> anyway, um, there's a company in Singularity called uh, Genome Compiler or BioCompiler. They talk about how programming your genes in future is like computer programming, right? It's just instead of zero and one, it's base four, ATCG. You program it, you want to grow a new limb, you want to be a blonde, you can. So I'll show you an example. If I want to make my cat glow in the dark, how would I do it? <laughs> so I would go to a company called Complete Genomics, take a hair from my cat um, and send it to them. For about $2,000 in three days, they'll send me the data. And I can then download it to the computer, go to a company called DNA 2.0, download a software for free called uh, Gene Designer 2.0, and then get the open source data from, of the uh, glow in the dark gene of a jellyfish. It's free. Play with it, program it, make it, you know, feel good about it, send it back to them. Uh, they will then send me the material, inject it into my cat, and look, I got a glow in the dark cat. <laughs> but I know you guys are all being, you know, some of you being Chinese, like red, so yeah, we can make a red glow in the dark cat. <laughs> Um, but then, you know, what happened is, um, uh, in fact, um, this year, earlier this year in August, um, at TEDxKL, my friend from Singularity, my classmate, came down and gave a talk about the fastest Kickstarter project that, uh, uh, during that time, Glow in a Dark Plant. Um, and he actually managed to get enough funds to make a Glow in a Dark Rose in time for Valentine's Day. And this is Andrew Hassel, a faculty member at Singularity. He talks about how in future a virus will, nothing, will be nothing more than a software. It's an app. So you want to grow an extra arm? You could. You know, you want to be blonde? You could. You, you know, it could be anything you wanted to do. So it's just a matter of programming. Now, the other, things I want, the other thing I want to talk to you about is obviously gamification and crowdsourcing. So this is my son, right, playing computer games. Like you, just got, you guys are all doing that. You know, he'll be watching TV, listening to music, playing with his friends, right, you know, and doing all kinds of stuff, keeping the mother away from the computer, you know, all that stuff. Um, but why do we like to play games? Because we like to solve puzzles and we like to... Uh, get rewarded very quickly. So how do you make use of that? I'm not sure you've seen this. If you go to Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam, so one of my friends is the uh, Finnish, uh, he's the uh, Netherlands uh, project manager. Um, basically, what they did was they put a sticker of a fly in the urinal, and that resulted in 80% cleaner toilets. 
because you know something about men and shooting. So, um, thank you. So anyway, um, you, you you guys know about the speed camera problem here that we have and all that, right? Instead of just you know finding people and you know and, and doing that, how about rewarding them for being good? So they did it in Sweden. So if you don't if you don't speed, you get a free lucky draw into winning a jackpot of um, of uh, the money that you find from people who speed, and 22% 20, less uh, less uh, uh, speed infringement. Folded is another interesting one at University of Washington. They're trying to find a way to kill the HIV virus. Folding protein is a very complex process. It's like Rubik's cube. Humans are good at that. So somebody may do a game. The one, at one point, the top high scorer for this game, Folded, you can go download it, is not um, a biochemist or a research scientist, it was a personal assistant in London. So you never know which one of you, just because you didn't go to the right school or had the right program, could find a cure for HIV, right? And this is a project from Singularity a uh, year before me, um, the doctor from WHO. He was very inspired after the program to find out why, despite the billions being spent to eradicate malaria, people were still dying of malaria. One of the biggest bottlenecks with malaria detection is that counting the parasites in the bloodstream. So what he did was he uploaded all this, made it into a game. So for one minute, you shoot the parasites, you know, and when you're shooting it, you're counting it for them. So every time you, you know, still playing Candy Crush, you know, you should try and play uh, malaria spot sort of, and save a life. So these are the projects of Singularity I'm talking about. The, so I was the team leader for a project called um, Corruption Tracker. So I spoke on the same stage at Reed Hoffman, Vinod Koshal, it's amazing exposure. And, you know, like um, Lalita said, I, you know, um, came from the dark side of investment banking, then was an academic and so forth. Um, so social enterprise was very new to me. But I had a very good friend, Darlene Dem, my classmate, who was the head of Ashoka Foundation. Um, and she taught me everything I knew about it. So what we tried to do in Corruption Tracker was we were trying to give a voice to people who don't have a voice in the act of corruption. Um, so you see corruption, you report it, and we, we basically send out the information. Um, and essentially, uh, social enterprise is the other thing I want to tell you about, right? On one hand, you've got NGOs that depend on sponsorship. On the other hand, you've got Wall Street, where maximizing shareholders' profit is the uh, main thing that you need to do. Those are both not sustainable. So what you need to look at is the first objective should be to provide a positive social benefit, and your second objective is to be profitable so you're sustainable. Um, this is a project from Singularity. So Metanet is a Pony Express drone that delivers medication to places where there are no roads. And uh, this is Medic Sensation, uh, very inspired by this project from an Indonesian girl that won the competition last year, created this device to let, let women check their own breasts for lumps. Um, I think I'm a bit out of time, but uh, this is a Blu-ray uh, DVD player that allows you to scan um, your blood from your DVD and tell you whether you have any virus um, stuff and so forth. And this is my favorite project, Aki. Um, they created this project this year. You put it into your mouth, it, it basically cleans your teeth using ultrasonic uh, receptors uh, in 30 seconds. No brushing required. Um, and you can grow meat and leather from, uh, um, you know, a singularity, a company called Livestock and Modern Meadows. So in the future, you never have to kill another animal. You can even grow fish and chicken. So they're working on it. So in very near future, you never have to kill another animal to get meat. And this is my friend, Rob Reinhardt, uh, creator of Soylent. Um, you, instead of eating food, he decided to make this uh, concoction where you just uh, drink it and you feel good. You know, uh, you don't have to eat at all. You only meet the social, he missed the social part of eating. The real reason he did it was because he said he was in a startup boat, had no money to buy McDonald's for 450 minimum. This is like 250. <laughs> so my parting words to you guys, thank you for being a wonderful audience. Um, this, is what Larry, this is what Larry Page said at Singularity. Are you work 99% of people are not working on something that they're passionate about to change the world. So if you're not, do it. Okay, thank you.